Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, David Bremner is going to lead us through the sponsorship both. Uh, thanks, David. So it's the end of the week, and we're all tired. So um, I don't know. Hopefully, we can get a little interesting discussion going. I think it's not so interesting if I tell you what to think. Um, so let's start with a, a survey. Who here is not yet a DD? Who's one or two, three, four? So you have experience of the sponsoring process from the, the sponsoree side, and I think that's part of what we want to talk about today. And what's that? Font size is too big? What, what's, what's the feeling? Larger. OK. How's that? It's OK? OK, so who here is sponsoring regularly? So you notice I'm not raising my hand. <laughs> so you might wonder why I'm doing this. Well, you know, somebody had to do it. Although after Ashish did a session, maybe somebody didn't. Anyway, I'm doing it. OK, who here occasionally sponsors? So the rest of the DDs, essentially, occasionally sponsor. Um, and so, well, I guess the first thing I wanted to talk about is why do we sponsor? I mean, so as individuals and as a project, why do we even have this process? I'm not, I'm not saying we shouldn't have this process. I'd just like to articulate why I think it, it seems like a reasonable place to start to ask, if we're doing this, why are we doing this? Anybody want the mic? Yes. Uh, he needs... I'm going to get some exercise out of Lucas today, I think. Yeah. Although, actually, Lucas is already in much better shape. We should swap, huh? I should run the mic. <laughs> Go ahead. So, to get upload rights, you need to have experience in packaging um, and you don't get them, well, and you need to get the experience. So it's, it's a chicken and egg problem. So to get the experience, you have to do the packaging, but you still need someone to actually upload it to the archive. So that's why we have the sponsoring process. It's necessary. So and, and training. It, yeah, and it also serves as a kind of mentoring even if it's a one-off thing, not a stable relationship. Okay. I mean, I think, I think as a project, that's the obvious goal, right? I mean, somebody yesterday remarked that most leaf packages are useless. Or, well, they didn't say it quite that strongly. But, but, but uh, that, okay, lots of packages that first-time packagers want to package have a fairly narrow audience. And, well... That might explain why they have trouble getting sponsors sometimes, but um, maybe that's not the main issue, right? So, so maybe it helps us be less, I don't know, pissed off at people for wanting to package obscure things when it's the process that's the point somehow. Okay, so there's injecting a little fill. Anybody else want to... Other reasons? I mean, do you... Do you think there's other compelling reasons that we should sponsor other than training and, and developing new full DDs eventually? Uh, in my case, I sponsor uh, packets because I was interested in the package itself and it added new features that I was interested in. Okay. So, of course, that's perfectly legitimate. To have useful software, obviously. Right. So... Um, most of the sponsored uploads I've done were 
basically for people I knew, um, friends or old friends or ex-colleagues, and who asked me, can you help me here? Um, usually not because I thought it was useful, because in that case, if that's really something like that, I would do it myself, um, or not find out about it. Uh, but yeah, that's what I think. So, doing favors for friends, okay. I could add guilt to that list, so I'm orphaning a package and I'm sponsoring it because I feel a bit bad about orphaning it. Why do I feel bad about orphaning it? Because upstream is great, so anyway, that's a different story. Okay, so I guess we, we have a variety of motivations. If we think about, I mean, some of the ideas we talked about in Ashish's session involved sort of the project developing new methodologies and websites and sort of the project doing stuff and I guess if we're going to do that then, then we need a project motivation, right? I mean if we see sponsoring as an extension of our own packaging that's fine, right? Nothing wrong with that but no reason that Debian should help us sponsor our pet packages any more than it, than it does help us package them, I guess. So I guess the biggest complaint, oh yeah, this is a good, good question from Arnos, and I think we talked about this in uh, Ashish's session as well, but uh, do we, should we push people more to teams when they start out? I don't know. <laughs> Plus one from Pabs. Anybody want the mic on that? Anybody think teams are a terrible idea? I know for a fact there are people within Debian that think teams are not, certainly that are, they're not a panacea. But is there anybody who think that they're a bad idea for new packagers? I guess it must depend on the team, right? But, uh, so I find a lot of responses that I write to mentors, which is not a huge number, but of the responses that I write to the list, a lot of them suggest teams for people to try. And so, I think it's all very well to say we should push people towards teams rather than mentors, but they don't know what team to, to go to, so that's part of the, the process. I think that uh, most teams have the same problems that as Debian, Debian mentors means uh, long uh, delays before someone replies, uh, some RFS which aren't uh, replied to, uh, different requirements based on different on who is responding, and even if it's a bit less of a problem for the different requirements, all of the other problems still apply. Right. It could be worse, in fact, on some teams than the general, I mean, I don't know that it is, but. Uh, anything else about teams people want to, yes? Um, I think that if you sponsor a, a package from someone, you are already a team of two persons. And uh, I don't quite understand the difference or the distinction which is made between team maintenance and sponsor it. Maybe Sponsor is the most elemental uh, form of, of team. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I guess we have sort of a generally positive feeling about teams, but it's not clear. I mean, I guess one thing we talked about in the last session was, well, if we had some whiz-bang infrastructure, then it could somehow have team-specific aspects to it so that it could be reused for, for teams to manage their stuff. And uh, I mean, in Package Pro, we, we somehow use PET as a way to manage this workflow for people coming into the teams. I mean, the way you request sponsorship is you work on a package, right? And, and it's observed to be done. But I don't know how this doesn't work, right, if you don't have a homogeneous, very homogeneous setting. OK. So the, I, I guess from the sponsoree point of view, the, there, are, there are certainly issues. Um, and I know that we have a few uh, sponsorees here and, and some on IRC. Um, there's a question of waiting, long waits. I think what's more 
aggravating for people is that there's a high degree of uncertainty. So it's not just that it will take a while, but you have no sense of is there being progress made or are people just politely ignoring me because this is a really stinky piece of software. I took a simple approach to avoid that problem completely. I wrote a small page explaining when I will actually sponsor the thing and it explains you have to approach me on IRC, do not send me emails, I don't want a backlog of sponsoring a request and if you can't reach me, I'm not going to sponsor. So talk to me directly, live communication and it's really direct communication, we can talk about sponsoring, if it isn't, well, I'm not going to keep, a, keep an eye on what I could have been sponsoring uh, somewhere else. There's like this mentor Debian net site that's piling up with packages that could have been uploaded. We need to have a completely different approach to that to actually get those into the archive, I think. So who here prefers to be approached on IRC for sponsoring requests? So to each their own, I guess. And uh, um, so as she's talked about some efforts to improve the feedback on on mentors to make sure that people get some uh, feed some response. You know, <laughs> their mail wasn't lost, for example. Uh, and I think that's a, a worthy. Uh, a worthy goal, but looking at how sort of incremental a goal that is and that we haven't managed to achieve that is a bit worrying as far as more ambitious goals. Um, so Arno uh, mentions on Gobi here that there's a sense of um, unfairness when, from people. And we had this same discussion before, the sense that requirements vary a lot between sponsors. Um, I don't know what the, the answer to that is. I think as long as sponsorship is a matter of individual developers doing it, then, it, then, then this will continue to be as idiosyncratic as we are. Um, so, uh, that sort of segues into my next all right so anybody right so so does anybody have any ideas about this issue of fairness or perception of unfairness? First of all, is it real i don 't know obviously a perception is, is real sort of by definition. But um, do you think it is unfair that different sponsors have fairly wildly different, well, I mean, within policy and sometimes slightly outside policy uh, standards? Yoi would like the mic. <laughs> Yoi, the bearded guy. You were just stretching. I guess it is somewhat unfair, but um, I also think it is, you can't really avoid that because people are going to be different anyway. Um, people with more experience are going to have stricter standards than fresh DDs um, simply because they have uh, more experience in knowing where to look and, and knowing what to do to, uh, before uploading. Um, so yeah, it's probably unfair but I don't think there's anything we can or should do about that. Sorry? Uh, unfair to, to people who are trying to upload, but also unfair to, to um, yeah, not just to them, but also uh, people who are actually trying to use a package and find a slightly more buggy package because it was uploaded by a less experienced person who didn't see a bug before uploading. It's 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 like like I said. It's not something we can we can actually do anything about. I think.
Any, anybody else? Um, so hopefully you can all see the various items on Gobi, and if some of them appeal to you, uh, feel free to, to bring them up. Um, so what about this concept of having a mentor's team? I'm, I'm not sure, so it's just a, a brainstorming idea. I'm not sure if I think it's a good idea or a bad idea. So we have a QA team, which takes care of lost and lonely packages and is great fun to be on, I hear. Stop snickering. Um, so this would presumably you know, have a kind of similar role, would look at the lost and lonely unsponsored packages and, or maybe we would say, okay, you want to sponsor packages, great, please join this team and let's all work together this way. Uh, I mean, I don't know that you can force people, but you could suggest, right? I mean, uh, say, hey, we think it would be great if people sponsoring would join this team and we'll be a bit more organized about this. So first of all, who thinks this is a terrible idea and we should stop discussing it right now? So that's kind of an endorsement. Um, who here would join such a team? Oh, you, you think it's a terrible idea. Good. I don't think it's a good idea, at least. Uh, we have a lot of teams that are not working very well, and getting another one is not going to improve things. Mm. Uh, I think it's a lot better to point people to existing working teams right. and try to get their training there than trying to get the BC people that could have been uh, spending some minutes sponsoring to join up in a team that's not going to work very well because everyone is busy elsewhere. So I don't think we need yet another team uh, which will, I suspect, will end up as a non-functioning team. So it's, yeah, it's certainly true. I mean, there won't magically be more DDs who are willing to sponsor because we call them a team, right? That, that's for sure. So how exactly do you think that team and how would that compare to the already existing uh, mentoring scheme of Debian women? Which I, is I really don't know that. So maybe you could tell me, can you tell us, me, ignorant me, about it? So my, my response is we don't need it because we already have it. We just need to advertise it more. Okay, so, so this, is the, this is the mentoring team of Debian women. Yeah, I don't think of it as a team because it's meant to be one-on-one -on -one personal mentoring. Okay. But it's still, yeah, it's, it's a mentoring effort. Yeah. So one thing that I'm not sure about, in version 1.0 of this buff, Ashish said that he thought 20% of packages coming to mentors could go to a team. That number seems low to me, but I don't have anything to back that up. Um, I mean, if, it's, if really only 20% of the packages on the Debian mentors list should be sponsored by some team, that leaves a lot left over, right? And, and uh, <clears throat> so then, then the answer clearly isn't direct people to the right team. I, I just, people have a better feeling about Shall we all make up our own statistics? I mean, what's your... <laughs> uh, with regards to Mentors Debian Net, I think it, a lot could be done to make it more useful. Uh, every time you upload a source package, it should be built automatically to see if it's basically building and logs should be provided if you want to have a look at it. Uh, it's uh, running some tests, but we should do as many automated tests on the source as we can, running it through the uh, source uh, trackers, the Lintian stuff, or anything we can think of that could improve the chance of someone actually dis detecting problems automatically. Uh, then the mentors, well, the, the sponsors would uh, have less work because packages will be rejected earlier, no, and the well, sponsoree well, would have an easier way of getting feedback without any humans being involved. So I, I just gave Ashish a, a mic. 
because he's been working on expo.debian.net, which is a replacement for is, mentors. Is this on? Okay, hi. And, and um, so maybe the, the short form of your question is that mentors could provide a lot more information, or, or the sponsoring package site could provide a lot more information. Not just information, but also feedback to the people that want sponsoring. Right. Uh, before people look at it, automated systems should look, up, look at them and... Can you just load a package from Expo to show that it already happens? <laughs> Can I load a package? I mean, you have the projector, so that would be helpful. I, I don't think I have an account or anything. Yeah, just on the web. Go to expo.demi.net, click okay. something. Um, I'm sorry I arrived late. It seems like what you talked about was uh, having reliable information by automated tools that prospective sponsors can use to automatically check a package's quality without downloading the source package themselves as part of the sponsoring upload. And so here's an example package on expo.debian.net. You can see that there's a bunch of quality assurance information labeled info. Um, for example, info package has Lintian warnings. What are they? Oh yeah, W, package needs version to dev helper build depends. So um, this code is actually pretty modular. I've just take, done some of the work of polishing it up so it actually works. Um, there's a lot more work that we could do. It's really easy to write new QA plugins also. And if you scroll down even farther, you can see there's a comment box, oh, except you're not logged in. But uh, were you to log in, you would see a comment box there. OK. What is my name? Or what was the question? Oh, please increase the font size. Yes. Uh, well, hmm. Control plus. Yeah. Yeah. Enough. See, if it didn't have all this shiny stuff on the left, we <laughs> could uh, the colorful what, what stuff. Other, um, one other thing I want to point out is there's a whole bunch of QA plugins, not just Lintian. I think my favorite is that it checks the watch file to see if it's the latest upstream release. Uh, this tool does not build the packages. Um, it would be definitely possible to add a QA plugin that actually does building and then checks that it builds in a pbuilder. Um, my perspective on this is that I want to just bring this site to the point where it can replace mentors.debian.net. I don't want to write all those QA plugins because I have so much else to do and because I want there to be a much bigger community involved in editing this program. So I'm extremely interested in mentoring people who want to hack on pretty modular Python to add that functionality. And I can totally wave my hands at the end of this buff and talk with anybody who wants to do that. Um. So, uh, so I guess it's not so clear to me this notion of a mentor's team has much uptake, but I feel like it's worth floating and, and seeing if people think it could serve a useful function. Um, it's, uh, it, I mean, people join the QA team, right? So people are willing to do somewhat onerous things. And the QA team might not be the best example. because it's <laughs> People are not willing to join the QA team. But also I thought the QA team isn't a team, but it's an effort of all of Debian developers. Yeah, and known at the same time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> OK. I think uh, in terms of a mentor's team, um, I guess I have this microphone, so I'm going to keep talking. Um, in terms of a mentor's team, one thing that might be interesting would be to rotate. So one thing that Launchpad does for code review of the Launchpad code itself is they have a reviewer on staff always around on IRC, and that trades off in four-hour periods or something. So you always know that between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. in some time zone, if you came onto IRC, somebody would be there and review your patch and give you feedback immediately. And that rotates. Does anybody think that would be a valuable structural addition? I mean, it's, a, it's one of those non-packaging contributions almost, right, that, that we should think about. I mean, we sometimes get a little focused on packaging things. But 
Lucas. You can ask. Well, let me let me rephrase. Uh, who here has reviewed a package in the past year? In my, on Mentos or anywhere general? at all for anybody? Okay. So, of you, um, would any of you be willing to sign up for maybe once a week slots to be on the IRC channel for two hours to review packages as people hop into the channel? <laughs> maybe a few. Okay. What do you think? Can you hand? So, go ahead. So the IRC channel is already pretty active with developers and non-developers reviewing each other's packages and stuff. So I'm not sure if that, I mean, it introduces a bit of predictability to the process, but I'm not sure how much it adds. Well, it seems like then maybe the reason, if you ask the question, why are people not getting their packages reviewed, maybe the answer goes something like, because they fail to show up on IRC. And if it's simply that they fail to show up, then what can we do to like throw them into the IRC channel? So let me answer, respond to that briefly. Um, although I hate to get Ashish and I going here and bore the rest of you. <laughs> um, people show up on IRC asking for sponsorship and that almost never works. People ask for review and that almost well, that quite often works. So uh, for whatever reason, people hanging out on the IRC channel are less interested in, in actual sponsoring. I think it's also a question of perception. Or at least a couple of people I've spoken with that had been uploading to mentors and uh, were really disappointed with the experience was basically expecting something more to happen. Mm. They were just sitting around hoping that the rest would happen magically and were very disappointed when it didn't. So telling them exactly what should happen next uh, up front and in their face, maybe when they upload, I don't know how it actually should be, doing, should be done, but a lot of people expect Debian to fix the rest, and that doesn't work. I mean, one thing we could do is when you upload your package to Expo, we could add some timeouts to the system where if within some number of days, you haven't received any comments, we tell you, we send you an email saying, hey, has anyone reviewed your package? If not, then take these next steps, like hop on IRC. And then if within N M days, it's not in the archive, then we ask you, is there anything you can do? Here's a list of things you can do. Do you think that just pinging the, up the mentee would help that way? Can we work on writing that email after this, Bob? <laughs> well, one thing that is a bit strange about Mentos is based on the assumption that every package should eventually get into Debian, which is not true because there are many more free applications available on the web, and we can want to package in Debian. Lots of crap is available, and we don't want it in Debian. And maybe what we, what we should uh, do if, if we, or if you use Expo as a, as a central tool for reviews, is ask the, the person asking for sponsorship for, for his motivations uh, for uploading this to Debian and also ask for a state of the art uh, re review of alternatives of that software uh, available already in Debian and elsewhere. <laughs> There is also a few uh, lists with, um, what should I call it, guidelines for sponsoring. I have one list and I'm aware of at least two or three others. And maybe the uh, prospective uh, packet maintainers should be pointed to these lists uh, to see if they want to approach one of the authors and get them to be their sponsor. Uh, I know someone accept emails, I get them on RC and some explains that they want to have these set of requirements in place before they touch the packet. And uh, I think just pointing people to that, the list of willing sponsors is, uh, is more effective than uh, hoping they will find them on their own. Or maybe just a common contact point for like 
all the sponsor, possible sponsors. We register that we are interested and with the summary on what requirements we have and then everyone will have a list in the wiki or I don't know, some mechanism to actually find potential sponsors. At the moment I don't think there's any uh, common or sh sh global list of potential sponsors in Debian. So it's an interesting idea. It, it would just be a wiki page, right? I mean, uh, something like that. You wanted to say something, Lucas? No? Just One thing along those lines that somebody else suggested is, I guess DKG isn't here, so I'll repeat it for him. Uh, he said that he would be interested in reviewing and perhaps sponsoring one package per month, and it might be valuable for the Expo site to let DDs sign up to say, we will email you about one package per month rather than subscribing to the flood of requests for sponsorship mails that is Debian Mentors. Is that something that other people are interested in, just to get a show of hands? Like saying how many packages you would sponsor on Expo per month or review, and then it'll email you exactly that many over the course of that month? Okay. I, I think one reason for the not huge amount of enthusiasm would be that people generally aren't interested in sponsoring everything. So I think there would need to be some sort of classification. Perhaps wants the mic. So during the discussions about how we could improve mentors.debian.net that led towards um, Deb Expo was the idea of metrics of a package. Um, and you could use these metrics to match between people willing to sponsor things and the packages that they will, might be willing to sponsor. Um, we came up with quite a lot of metrics. I think I reviewed some of the pages that people had written about how they, um, what sort of packages they sponsor and what their requirements were and came up with a list of things that would be either automatable or could uh, have a questionnaire kind of thing that sponsorees could fill in. So things like the maintainer is in NM or is willing to enter NM. Mm -hmm. um, is it a native package? What section is it? Uh, does it have a watch file or not? Um, does it use CDBS? Does it use Dev Helper? Does it use managers scripts? Um, are there any Lintian errors? So that sort of thing. So you could more easily find packages that you're likely to be willing to sponsor. And on the other side of things, the sponsorees could see that X number of Debian developers are willing to look at the package and or the um, package does not meet the requirements of these other sponsors. For the following reasons. Yeah, and then they could work on those reasons and uh, that would improve the package and make it more likely to get it into the archive. Some of the metrics should also be um, uh, properties of the person looking for a sponsor. At least I am more willing to sponsor packages if the prospective maintainer plan to actually spend time on maintaining the packet. I got the impression that a lot of well, I don't know, but I get the impression that some people just do a one-off packaging effort and expect to drop it in the archive and then leave. Uh, I'm not really interested in sponsoring that kind of thing because that's just leaving the me, leaving me with, with the problem of keeping an eye on that packet. Um, so the reason I want to one of the reasons I want people on the on IRC, I want to ask them how much time do you actually plan to spend on maintaining this package? Uh, how much uh, time do you have spared to actually talk to upstream? What kind of process do they actually plan to, to use to maintain a packet in Debian? And that's equally important to make sure that uh, the quality of the packages in the archive stay uh, high, because it's not a dumping ground for, for whatever package you can find on the web. It's uh, supposed to be an in integrated and well-polished distribution. So one, along those lines, one thing that sort of bothers me is when I see a few times there's some maintainers of packages who aren't DMs and aren't DDs and who repeatedly seem to 
offer parentheses updated package to the Debian mentors list for sponsorship. And it's good that they're updating their package. That's excellent. Um, the follow-up should be that somebody in the community should make sure those people get DM or DD status so that we can stop being flooded with updated packages mails. And in fact, those people who are updating their packages are exactly the kind of people who are putting in the work that you're asking for. Um, but we don't tell people very clearly, like, after N uploads, you should start hunting around for a DM status. Um, and so I guess what I want to see us do is for packages, when we see updated package on the Debian mentors list, and I can begin doing this myself, um, talk to those people and ask them, have you considered getting DM status yet? Uh, I have a question. Why, why update, updated, updated packages show up on mentors again? Because uh, it's really easier to, to sponsor somebody who you already sponsored once, and you know uh, what this person knows already, and, and uh, well, I, I, I ask all my sponsorees to, to send a future uh, request directly to me and not to mentors and uh, even uh, new packages, completely new packages, uh, I want them to send uh, directly to me. It would be really easy to build into Expo as a work, it would be something to be really easy to build into Expo as a workflow. Uh, when someone wants to submit a, a package, he could be asked whether it's a new version of an existing package and then uh, the, the former sponsor, sponsor gets notified. To answer, um, well, quickly to answer the question a little bit about why people, why we see these updated messages at all, um, a lot of the, uh, when I have read these threads, often it seems that the original sponsor didn't respond to this person's emails, and this person has no idea why, and simply thinks that they should go and ask the public list since they didn't get an answer from their previous sponsor. Most of the time, they don't even ask the previous sponsor because uh, even my sponsors sometimes do that, and I reply to them in private and ask why. Why didn't you ask me first? I, I would uh, upload it in 24 hours. Personally, I must admit that I find uh, uploading to mentors Debianet convenient for me. I have one place to keep track of the the source packets, and some of the people I've been sponsoring has not really a uh, website where they can put the source. Can you speak so, up a bit? I can try. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Uh, what I said, I, I find uh, f fetching the source from, uh, from the mentor's site quite convenient. Uh, for some people, they don't have a, another place to put it. And just uh, getting it in there is more convenient for me. So it's perfectly okay for me to do updates via mentor's Debian net. I, I think the distinction is between putting stuff on mentor's .net or expo and posting a request for sponsorship on the mentors list. And I, I think the, the question was, why do people I've sponsored go to the mentors list and ask for sponsorship rather than coming back to me? And uh, I, I don't know. I, I mean, uh, as she posited one possible explanation. People, I guess, I guess on the other hand, maybe not every sponsor feels like you do. Generally, I sponsor very few packages, but by the time I decide to sponsor something, I decided to sponsor it for its full life cycle. So uh, other people might have different approaches. They, they say, okay, I have time today, I'll sponsor a package, but it's not a... Well, um, so we, I guess it's decided where DebConf is next year, or 2013? <laughs> To offer one more answer to why people don't uh, ask their previous sponsor, so in your case, you told them, but then for no obvious reason, they then went to the list. Is that right? Yeah. Um, I mean, he said yes. Um, so it's not that, that fact. They may have missed that message, because they were that paragraph, because they were so excited about the rest of the uploading part. and the fact that people should go back to their original sponsors isn't so clearly written in every single place in the documentation, which is where it should be. Oh. 
in all my in all my uh, responses to uh, uh, sponsorship sponsorship requests, there's, there's in my signature there's a link to my guidelines and one of the uh, questions and in, uh, in there is uh, what should I do if I will need another upload and uh, uh, in the in the answer uh, the I wrote that one should uh, simply simply ask me again. Are there any uh, mentees in the room who use Debian Mentors and try to get sponsored uploads? OK, well, never mind then. So um, I guess we have about five minutes left. Does that seem about right? Um, so, I, I mean, I think we had a reasonable, if fairly low-key conversation today. Um, and between last DebConf and this DebConf, we, meaning Ashish, replace mentors.debian.net. <laughs> so, what's one thing that we can do before next DebConf to improve the mentors process? The mic. Um, I think the, the matching system that Paul Weiss has described would be a win-win both for the sponsors and the sponsorees. It would save a lot of time in basically saying the same things and people having to wait longer than they should. What is the system? Um, so he, he described a sort of um, set of features of packages mm. which uh, can be used to characterize a, an RFS and be matched against features that sponsors uh, sort of consider as a requirements to sponsor something. And that could be used as sort of giving automated feedback to sponsorees uh, just by knowing what are the requirements of the sponsors. And I was just wondering, uh, Paul, is this, is this an idea or is there a plan about implementing it? And if there isn't, maybe we should be asking people from Debian Mentors whether anyone would be... <laughs> For you, Paul, um, is... Uh, is, is there a plan to implement the, package, the packaging tagging stuff that you talked about that was part of the inspiration for Expo? I personally don't plan to do that. Um, Ashish might want to, or someone else. You could ask for volunteers in Debian Mentors. You could ask for volunteers in Debian Mentors. I'm sure there's people with Python skills in Mentors. It's not a terribly complex thing. Yeah. Um, well, I want to also ask, is there anyone here who wants to help me develop the Expo app and write some Python web code? <laughs> OK. OK. Well, we do have some other uh, contributors who are showing up in IRC, so hopefully, hopefully they can. But if not, then like you said, we can so, ask again. So, Seraphim, are you willing to be the contact point for that idea? Put your name on a wiki and say, hey, if you want to talk about this, let's Okay, but Me that's too. something. Okay, great. Okay, um, I have to tell my talk, Meister, that I'm out of time. And uh, I, uh, we should wind things up. Any last comments? We had a, lots of spaces to fill with talk today. Okay, well, thank you all for coming, and thank you all for contributing to the discussion.